I, I opened the wrong video. But um, yeah, I opened the wrong poster. But today, today we have Mustafa. Actually, today he's going to be doing a talk on virtual machines. So I hope you all are excited for today. And yeah, so I'm here with Ajinkya, Omka, Dawood, Sunda, and Mustafa. And yeah, so hopefully you all enjoy the session. My name's Aman Amkasi. I'm going to pass over to Ajinkya, Omka, Dawood, Sunda, and Mustafa. Hopefully you enjoy. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button uh, to see uh, what's next. And check out everyone's social media in the description. That's great, Salman. And uh, I want to thank everyone who is still watching the session. We have 23 people watching us. So I want to thank each and every one of you for joining in today. And uh, uh, like I have seen like you have joined yesterday and day before as well. And those were pretty much good sessions delivered by Dawood and Gomo. So today we have with us Mustafa, who is also a gold student partner for Microsoft. And he's going to be speaking on uh, virtual machines. So let me just quick like uh, pass it on to Dawood. Dawood, do you want to say anything about today's session? Like, Yes, um, absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to this amazing audience. Um, it's been, it been really cool having you all coming from South Africa, Ghana, India, and various parts of the world, Nigeria and co. And Rihanna, I think it's Rihanna Pinjari has, has always been in the chat. So we can see we have constant people who are coming up because they see the sessions to be very useful. Uh, in the past two days, it's been awesome. We built a website, uh, and then we continued with .NET. And today, we're going to be doing something on virtual machine. And virtual machine, who doesn't like an artificial machine, right? Like your natural machine, and you have artificial machine. Like, so it's really awesome. So I'm sure um, Mustafa is going to give an amazing session. Um, excited, and we are right in the chat to help you. Over to you again, um, Omkar. Uh, so that's great and uh, without uh, wasting further time we'll get over to mustafa mustafa do you do want to introduce yourself first yeah so hello everyone i am mustafa from india maharashtra dhule i have been an msp since five years and uh, my main uh, area of focus is cloud computing and i especially like virtual machines because uh, you know i like power so you know when you have power you can do anything you want so with virtual machines you have power and when I say power, I will show you in the next 60 minutes why I'm saying that. Why virtual machines is power. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, virtual machine. Uh, I, I'll start with the session, okay? So, first of all, if, uh, if you don't have an Azure account, you need an Azure account if you want to do hands-on. So, if you are... If you are a, uh, is my screen visible? I'll just care, share my screen. Uh, no, we're going to put a link in the chat. If you want to get Azure credits, you can just go to that. So, yes. Oh, whoops. Uh, imagine that's an S. All right. So, now is my screen visible? Okay, all right. Yeah. So, this is the link. Okay, someone has also posted the link. So MSP Inspire, yes. So if you go on this link, uh, as a student, you can get a free account on Microsoft Azure by giving your by verifying as a college student. So having your an Azure account can open n number of possibilities for you, and you know, get you things that generally normal people don't have. So you see, Microsoft has given you a huge opportunity as a student to access to access those paid resources free of cost. Now there are unlimited benefits which you can go and explore on this link and it is also in the chat as well. So I'll just uh, move on. All right. So first of all, what is a virtual machine? So just a second. So virtual machine, the name itself says that a machine that is virtually available, right? It's a very basic topic. It's a very basic uh, funda about a virtual machine. Uh, many of you guys have, you know, created VMs and uh, in your own local desktop, but there is no huge benefit of those VMs other than, you know, making a uh, make uh, making an operating, operating system image to use uh, 
linux in ubuntu uh, linux in uh, windows or windows in linux something like that so that is the whole purpose that you use a vm for but there are many other uses of a virtual machine so all the attendees uh, if you want to you know get a better grip what i always do in my sessions is i tell everyone to imagine a company by your name so let's say if we take the name uh, riana let's say riana is in the session as well so if i say riana so riana can imagine a company named as riana infotech dauda can imagine dauda infotech so you know everyone can imagine a company name named as their name and whenever i i give an example you can relate your, your idea with that company right so just imagine your company and uh, what you have is you have five designers and all these five designers need high spec computers okay now let's say your budget is $1000 and uh, let's say a computer uh, is costing you $300 so the maximum high spec computers you can buy in $300 you won't get a high spec computer you can get a medium spec computer so the maximum medium spec computers you can buy is 3 because you are short on budget what you can do is you can leverage the power of cloud to get this job done how will you do it so let's say there are three people in this company let's say let's take uh, atharva infotech okay so atharva infotech so in atharva infotech he has uh, five employees a b c d e so a b c d e all are uh, graphic designers so graphic designers need a good computer a good high end with graphic card and a fast processing computer so what he will do is he will leverage the power of virtual machine and allot each virtual machine to five computers in his do- in his uh, office so that that those computers don't need to be high spec what he can do is he can can buy computers worth uh, $100 $150 and place them in his office and provide them good internet that's the only requirement and what he can do is he can he can you know buy a subscription on microsoft azure so this is the this is the portal that you can see on the screen so you can buy a subscription on microsoft azure so currently i have two subscriptions let's say these two all right so when you buy a subscription your subscription gets listed over here and because as you are a student you will see a student subscription azure for student subscription over here if you get a azure uh, subscription so you buy a subscription you create five virtual machines and with those five virtual machines you you get five ip addresses and those five ip addresses to those five you will allot those five ip addresses to five designers so whenever they want to work on this uh, this uh, this idea of theirs or whatever work they do in their company in their atharva infotech they can type in they can simply go in they can simply type uh, so the most common and popularly used is rdp they can type the ip address over here and they will get the access to those virtual machines okay so these these five people so let's talk about these five people okay let's t- talk about a so this guy a in uh, atharva infotech what happened is so now i what i did is i went in atharva infotech and i told a so i have given you this computer this is your ip address so whenever you want to work just type in this ip address and when you type this ip address a new machine will open up in front of you and you have to do your work over there okay now consider a scenario that he doesn't have a virtual machine and he is working on his own laptop or in or in, or in his own machine and if the current goes or if something unfortunate happens what will happen is every, all of the work that he has been doing will will just wipe off okay so generally virtual machines help in these scenarios as well a virtual machine is all time on in the virtual server in in the actual server that is in microsoft data centers so you don't have to worry about the machines getting shut down all you have to worry about is doing your work so even if you just close the window like simply like uh, let's say i'll open this and if you simply just close this window so the same way if you close the remote desktop the whole uh, thing will just close but your virtual machine will stay on on microsoft servers you don't need to worry about power cuts you don't need to worry about internet connections or internet speed or latency or you don't need to worry about computing power there are a lot of things that you won't need to worry about so you know just to make your life and your company work simpler to make your business simpler you use cloud computing and virtual machines so so when now a is working on a project and uh, let's say he needs to go to delhi or he needs to go to mumbai to get his uh, to you know show his work 
so what a normal person would do is he, he would just carry his laptop with him and go to mumbai and present whatever he wants okay what a person can do is you can uh, see i'll tell you what a will do what a will do is a, a has this uh, i'll show this so you see this ip address over here what a can do is just and take it with him when he goes to mumbai and then wherever or a laptop or you know wherever he is presenting he can just go to start type rdp and just type in the ip address and all the work that he has been doing you know go into virtual machines add add a virtual machine virtual machine so so while creating this virtual machine each and every step has some significance so every option that you choose powerful and how smooth and easy running your virtual machine is so i'll start explaining each uh, segments starting from subscription when you create a virtual machine the first thing you have to decide is the subscription you are going to now although this is uh, we are talking about microsoft azure right now and you know my expertise is in microsoft azure but i have experience in my, uh, microsoft azure aws google cloud platform and oracle cloud so the 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 specification and the requirements is the same in all cloud platform form each and every cloud platform will have a subscription a virtual machine name region availability options so whatever we are doing right now is applicable on all cloud platforms so virtual machine is a centralized thing that everyone has so first of all you have to decide which subscription you have to choose so let's say i choose this uh, this the, the first subscription okay now let's talk about resource groups so just imagine resource group as a group where you keep all your resources so that you you know you can you can have shared resources let's imagine uh, it like this uh, you are making a website and for that website you have allotted some resources and you are paying for those resources now a website doesn't necessarily always utilize all those resources but anyways the billing will go on what you can do is when you do some other work let's say you are making another website or you are making a virtual machine and if you have a resource group ready you can tell that virtual machine to use those resources from that website so what will happen is you don't need to create new networks you won't be charged for new networks network connections you know router the internet cost and the everything the whole thing you will be simply charged for the for the uptime and the resources that you use so you see shared resources between your website and your virtual machine so that's why you use resource groups you should always create your resource group and you know resource group also helps you in billing say if you are a big company and you have different departments in your company let's say you have a front end the whole the a team that manages front end and a team who manages back end and you need to allot x y z resources to both of them it it doesn't necessarily need to be a, a virtual machine so what you can do is you can create a resource group a common resource group between both the teams so that you don't need to pay separately for both the teams so this is how a resource group is useful so for this scenario instead of using an existing resource group i'll just create a new resource group uh, so let's uh, name the resource group as learn tech global okay so this is the name of the resource group and i'll click okay so okay i'll add something more to this okay i'll just keep it uh, short lg underscore rg means resource group uh, normally i always end my resource groups with the underscore rg names so you know it doesn't get confused with any other names so rg means resource group i'll just click okay and a new resource group will be created the virtual machine name should be unique so let's la uh, let's name this as uh, india vm okay so let's name this as india vm and the region you know region i am very specific about the region that i choose there is a reason for that generally people choose a region that is nearer to them because if you have a region that is near to you then your traffic will be faster you know you will have easier traffic control with the audience that you have over there but generally i choose west us or east us because the pricing tier of west us is less than any other uh, regions so you can choose any region that you want you can you know even choose india from here you have india as well so you know whatever whatever country you belong to you can you see you, you can see south india west india or the region that whatever region you like you can choose that i am choosing west us too one more thing availability options i won't choose this because uh, 
so see this is a whole different topic availability zone and availability set you know you can read it uh, you can use microsoft learn to know what uh, what the whole thing is let's uh, generally i prefer windows server 2019 data center the reason for using windows server 2019 data center is these windows server are very fast these data center versions are really fast so they don't have all those media options which makes them faster uh from this uh, size you can choose any size uh, by default it selected standard f4s for me because this is the size that i use so what you can do is just select size now this is the spec picker so this is a spec picker what happens is you can you know decide whatever spec you want you see this uh, this uh, blue symbol over here this says that these are the trending uh, virtual machine instances you won't see f4s over here the one that i use f4s so the reason why you won't see is because that is a specific vm that i use what i do is generally i i arrange these with what i want so what i do is first of all i always use a virtual machine that has premium disk so what i do is i can sort it with the costing thing just a so you know you can see all the virtual machine with respect to cost so let's take a virtual machine of uh, what i normally take is f4s so let's let's take f4s now let's read this okay so first of all what you know about f4s you you can take any machines i'll explain just one so f4s is the name it is of the family compute optimized so there are multiple uh, families there is general purpose compute opti optimized memory optimized gpu optimized so and there are very high end computing or cost more than 1 lakh rupees 2 lakh rupees as well this is a very small one so this is a compute optimized virtual machine i normally take this one because compute i told you right compute power is the max the thing that i desire the most so this is a compute optimized machine which has four v cpus virtual cpus it has ram of 8 gb 8 gb is sufficient data disk 16 16 into 6 each data disk is one data disk is of 64 gb see all this concept is applicable to all the platforms okay so 16 gb uh, 16 disk each disk is of 64 gb uh, input outputs per second maximum iops i generally prefer a virtual machine which has a lot of iops so because of this the input output per second is really fast so you know i have studied a lot which virtual machine one should use and for that i think f4s is the best if you want compute optimized so 1280 iops see other are really less other uh, compared to this temporary storage is 16 gbs premium disk is supported so premium disk is premium ssd there are three, three types of disk as a, a normal hdd standard ssd and premium ssd so for now there are three there is one more a fourth one but that is still uh, that is still some, uh, something in beta phase so let's select this uh, f4s and click on select so you see we have selected this virtual machine for azure spot instances just keep it no because that is something for an advanced user let's keep the username as azure user user is a good username azure user all right so this is a good username let's set a password all right so you should always remember the username and the password because if you forget it it ca it can be quite troublesome so let's say the the username is azure uh, azure user i just keep all of this in small azure user all right so public inbound ports allow selected ports so this is the port control that you want you know to the virtual machine who can access it normally i just click all of these because there is no saying what, what with what uh, uh, with what platform i'll access it so i just keep everything on so whenever i need to access it with any of these uh, ports i can access it uh, you necessarily don't need to tick all of this rdp is enough so already have a windows server license yes i have it so i'll do it yes i confirm i have an eligible windows server license now next we will go to disks so in disk we have multiple options so you remember uh, when we were selecting in the spec picker which virtual machine instance you should select there it was written premium uh, disk supported so i said uh, i want a disk i want a virtual machine that supports premium disk so that's why this option is available over here standard hdd 
standard SSD and premium SSD. So I am selecting premium SSD over here, which was by default. Encryption T, I won't touch it. And all of this, I'll just leave it as it is. There is advanced, but you know, you don't need to modify all of this. Just simply go to networking. You can actually skip all of this, but for the sake of information, I'm just conveying all of this. So see, uh, a virtual network is needed to connect all the resources that will be created when you create this virtual machine. It is automatically done. So when you see new in the bracket, it is for you. So next is subnet is also automatically created for you. Same with public IP. NIC network security group, keep it as basic. Ports is already selected. Accelerated networking, yes, on. Place this virtual machine behind an existing load balancing solution. This is a completely personal choice, but if you do yes, then you have to do further configurations that will come with it. So let's keep it to no, because we, we are not doing something really huge like quantum computing or something really important over here. So let's keep it at, at no. Now let's go to next. So next is monitoring. Boot diagnostic on, OS guest diagnostic, you can keep it on or off, I'll just keep it on. Di uh, diagnostic storage account, it will, it will create a new account for that. You know, you can explore all of this. Let's leave all of this as well as it is. But you know, remember, uh, so the reason I came up to here is, you know, to disable this auto shutdown, enable auto shutdown, just do it off. Okay. Because there was a time when, when I was very new to virtual machines, what used to happen is, uh, I created a virtual machine today and I did some work. I slept off and tomorrow morning when I start the virtual machine, it says that the virtual machine is off. I, 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 and I never understood. I mean, now I understood. But then I never understood why it used to, you know, get turned off. But then I, you know, I read a lot about it. And then I realized that there is a thing called enable auto shutdown, which is enabled by default. So you have to come in this setting and disable it. Otherwise, all your work progress and everything will be, you know, closed and it will uh, automatically shut down. Enable backup, just keep it off. Otherwise, if you do it on, then you will be charged more for that. Click on next, advanced. So, you know, leave all of these as it is. This is for advanced users. Keep the generation one as it is. Don't go to generation two. Generation two doesn't mean that you will have something really great. Just keep it as generation one. And this whole setting is default. Next tags is something you can read online. There's, there's a lot of things about tags. And then you can do is next review and create. It will, you know, review all the things that you did and it will run a validation on it. So we'll just wait for the validation. All right, it says validation passed. Sometimes it says validation failed as well. So when it says validation failed, that means you should just close the whole thing and reconfigure it. Maybe because there is some setting that you did not do right. Okay, so this is the overview page of your virtual machine. You can, you know, read everything about what you selected for your VM. So see, we can read over here. Standard F4S. So you remember we selected F4S over there and uh, Subscription credits apply. So you see this uh, when we did it over there, it said if you remember it was 9600 rupees per month. So because we are in India region, it says in rupees, it will show you in local currency wherever you are. So it says 13 rupees per hour. So when you multiply it and the whole, do whole the, the whole calculation, it will be six uh, 9600 rupees per month. Of course, you can control the spending expenditure. See, Microsoft Azure is very flexible. You can control your expenditure. You can do cost savings. You can see where actually, where exactly you're spending. The whole thing is available in billing and uh, subscription, the whole cost and billing thing. I, maybe I'll show it later if we have enough time. So this is the whole setting. We'll just review it once, you know, just to make sure. So the subscription is usual to the subscription. So if you are doing it, it will be Azure student subscription, something like that. Resource group, we created LG underscore RG. We named the virtual machine as India VM. The region is West US 2. Availability options is, uh, we just, you know, ignored the availability options. You can read about it later. Image is the operating system image that we decided was Windows Server 2019 data center. Size is standard for, uh, F4S, which has four vCPUs and eight, gig, eight gigs of memory. Username is Azure user. The inbound ports that we enabled is RDP, HTTP, HTTPS, SSH. Already have a Windows license? Yes. See, you should always review this. 
because if you don't review this you won't know what configuration you did and when you face an issue in future with your virtual machine you cannot pinpoint where the issue was so azure spot instance no os disk type premium ssd this we left by default this is automatically created you can see over here that auto shutdown is disabled backup is disabled uh, the rest thing i left as default and the whole advanced thing okay so i'll just uh, hop on to a new website where you know you can uh, learn more about a virtual machine because virtual machine is something that everyone uses but it is very difficult to you know get hands on and learn more specific about it so the best platform to learn anything about anything at all is docs.microsoft.com so maybe the team can paste this link in the chat you can have access to this link yeah um if you want a shorter so link, you just, can just go just head over to ms slash learn and that should that should be a easier link to access yeah all right so just go on uh, microsoft learn this is the page of microsoft learn just search virtual machine just search it over here and you see you will have a lot of results over here you can learn anything you want from uh, microsoft learn there there are a lot of things there are learning paths as well so just click on learn so see you can sort it as you want all documentation learn reference click on learn if you click on learn it is better because because you will have learning paths to learn and click on introduction to azure virtual machine when you click over here you will have a proper study schedule on what to learn first you can you know create a virtual machine for free you will you will have all the details you need to learn about a virtual machine over here so this is the whole the, the whole thing where you can learn more about it now let's get back to the virtual machine that we were creating so uh, you can even download a template for this automation uh, for this uh, virtual machine creation for automation so this is the, the download a template thing is when you want to create remember i said atharva infotech has five employees you can simply download a template for this and apply it for a b c d e so all five people have will have the same uh, virtual machines now i'll click on create and the whole creation process will start you can see it on the screen and uh, on the notification in the notification area as well you can see initializing deployment and submitting the deployment template for resource group lg underscore rg and i hope you can see the whole thing you can even go into the notification and see see the whole screen will uh, get redirected to a new page you can click on deployment details and the details will show up over here as you can see uh, one by one each and every resources that you selected will get allotted for you and in the notification as well you can see deployment in progress so let's take a 3 minute you know to just cool off and salman mm-hmm. can you just you know do your thing Ustafa, Ustafa, <laughs> yeah. we have a question here from atarva atarva yes, patwardhan yes. he is okay. asking uh, can someone explain me the difference between vms and containers i was reading up on ms learn but found it a bit confusing uh, yes this is a very good question so yeah uh, maybe i'll explain this after the break is that okay yeah or uh, should uh, i explain if, it in the break salman uh, you can you can explain it now if you want i don't mind taking it as well if you all right so all right so i'll explain it so see containers is something you use containers for a specific application that you have already developed virtual machine is a computer itself it's like a pc you see when you use containers you don't have desktop icons you don't have all those accessibility features that you have on a on a windows operating system or an ubuntu operating system so you need to you know in containers you just keep the resources that you require so let's say you have an application that requires that requires a java runtime and that requires some uh, some connectivity some ip addresses so you just you know bundle everything into a container and then you deploy that container to get your uh, the the whole project running container is much cheaper than a virtual machine because in virtual machine you have to take care of the cpus you have to take care of the ram you have to take care you have to take care of the the whole uh, managerial part of a machine that you maintain at your home 
the same thing you have to manage in the virtual machine as well because a virtual machine is a very pure example of infrastructure as a service you can read about infrastructure as a service container doesn't come in infrastructure as a service it's a thing that uh, you know you can call it something between infrastructure as a service and a platform as a service even microsoft azure has the whole container thing other than this virtual machine thing so i hope i am related to you that might help you you can even contact me on linkedin and twitter as well That's yeah great, um, thank you so much so, salman can you just uh, put on the timer yeah um yeah right. so if if anyone's interested uh, what mustafa is mentioning is this whole you know hybrid uh, public and you know five public private and hybrid cloud model so you've got that whole you know transition from going from private cloud which can be essentially seen as on prem and then you, you know you start transitioning into you know uh you know hybrid and then public cloud and you have that infrastructure as a service model which is you know your virtual machines but then as soon as you you know start you 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 want the os to be managed you know you you start using you know platform as a service which is what your containers are you've got different ways of using containers on uh, azure so you can use you know um is is my mic even on yeah so you can use uh you can use uh, kubernetes which is a way to you know how orchestrate a lot of you know containers uh, you know a, a huge scale Uh, you've got Azure App Service, which is a way where you know you can just use run all your web apps and everything on there. And you know it, it's a it's a nice, quick and easy way to get stuff up and running. There is also uh, static static web apps, which is there is also. So yeah, I'm gonna put a time on. Hopefully yeah, everyone. That's absolutely that. true. Uh, before you go, before you go, Salman, uh, Mustafa, you can check in the chat. I just pasted a link. Click on that link, and it will show on your screen. um there's mustafa's handle in in that so you can follow him and also if you want to know um i i also wrote an article on virtual machine um so if you want to give it a read just below you know after the go on 3 minutes break and twitter handle of mustafa there is how i use virtual machine over there so you can just follow it up so some of you said you wanted to see my face today <laughs> so i decided to turn on my camera so you could see me um but as part of the informations on this particular page you know already we have the day three form over there you can just click on that particular link and then you will fill out the you know um what is required for you to get attendance so we show the day three form one public and one at the later parts like i mean the last part we put another one which is just in the chat that one would not be on the screen so someone who didn't attend you know the first part and then they not feel that you know someone who just saw this one on internet and filled it we we'll compare it to the last part and then we award you the certificate as due so i think so far mustafa has done great job explaining what you know virtual machines are what you need to select um telling you that you can use you know um your password and username to be able to you know get yourself set up and it's it's really amazing the compute power that we have with you know a uh, virtual machine so um i'm excited about the session i see a lot of people giving it thumbs up please like the video and subscribe let us know that you actually enjoying the session you taking some weird something away get us to 1.2k so, today okay so timer thank you for that david here's our timer enjoy the music too Just like the street lights lit this town like a fire in a blaze got to burn it down Can't be afraid to leave this out We got this far don't know how
We are back for my yes, break. So let's get back. Let me stop this music. Alright, there you go. Cool, are we ready? Alright, so we'll continue with the the whole uh, procedure that we were doing. So you see previously you was uh, you you saw that your deployment is in progress and now deployment succeeded. Again, I'm telling you deployment can fail, which doesn't 99% of the time it doesn't fail. Maybe it can fail. You have to create it again. So you can check it from the notification as well as from this deployment page. Your deployment is complete. Yes, it is complete. This all this is all the thing. You can go to next steps. This is the deployment details. The whole resources that got allotted while creating this uh, virtual machine. Simply click on go to resources. And this is the VM that you're looking at this. So this is the whole, you know, the command center, the control center of your VM. So there are many ways if you want to get back to this page. Uh, I'll just show a few ways. First is just go to portal.azure.com. And then you can see the most recent creation in this recent resources, India VM. And then you will land at this uh, virtual machine page of yours. Another way is come back to the whole portal thing. Click on virtual machines. And then select the virtual machine you want to access. So see, uh, let's talk. Uh, let's talk in two minutes about this this page over here. So see, the whole uh, the whole control is in your hands on this page. You can connect it. You can start. You can restart. Stop. Capture. Delete. Refresh. The whole uh, configuration is visible over here. All the capabilities and the whole configuration thing. You can do monitoring from here. How much workload is there? Because this is a quite fresh virtual machine. There is not much to, to display on this graph. But you can view it over here about your network, your usage, CPU usage, everything, everything you can monitor. So this is the beauty of Microsoft Azure. It is so simple that you can you know monitor everything you want. You can see the capabilities of it. You can even have tutorials on what to do, how to learn. And there are free training resources from Microsoft on my uh, virtual machines. And all the features of Microsoft Azure from here. Uh, then in the left hand side pane you can see different options over here you can see the billing as well you can see the boot diagnostic when you have some issues while booting you can uh, control the automatic shutdown the bastion the bastion is the this bastion thing is the batch uh, batch command line thing where you can control it by a command line you can even use a serial console you can use serial console to control the vm via via the Serially connected monitor to your virtual machine in the data center itself. You can reset your password. Uh, you can do backup. You can, you know, resize your virtual machine by clicking on size. You can connect. You can modify the network. You can modify your security. You have a lot of. See, the when I tell you that it is your command center, that means it is actually a command center for you. You can control everything from here. See, this is understanding this page is very important because. Whenever something goes wrong, you have to come to this page and do the thing, do it right, right? So there is something missing. That's why something has gone wrong. So you have to come here and, you know, get it done right. So when you click on connect, you can select in what way you want to connect it. So we'll do it by RDP. So I'll click on RDP. When you click on RDP, it will ask you that this is the port number. This is the IP address. Download RDP file and you can save the file. OK, so this file over here got downloaded. I can click on this file and my virtual machine will start connecting. This is one way. Another way is simply come over here. You can see on the overview page of your virtual machine. Come over here to public IP address. So, so you remember I was talking about a public IP address. You can access anywhere you go. So simply come over here. Copy this public IP address. I'll just click on copy. And uh, you can click on start. You can type RDP. Go to rem remote desktop connection and paste the IP address and click on connect. So you see you have two ways of connecting the whole thing. OK, so I'll just close this. Now let's go by this. So I'll just click here. Connect. It is asking me for a password. I think this is my PC password it is asking for. OK, 
I think I don't remember my. Okay, I'll just try this. Is that you, Azure user? All right. So the username and password instead I instead of putting the virtual machine ID password, I was trying my own ID password of my PC. That was my bad. So what I did was you remember the username password we set while creating the virtual machine. I just put that ID password over here and I'll just click on yes to uh, approve all the certificates. And see, this is not my screen. This is not my machine. This is a virtual machine in a Microsoft data center. I can prove it. I have a way of proving it that this is not my machine. I'll just prove it right now. So first of all, the one way is that this is a remote desktop connection. You can see the bar over here. You can see the IP address over here. This is not my machine. This is, I mean, this is my machine, but it is a machine in a Microsoft data center. We want to allow your PC to be discovered. Yes. So see, everything is inoperable right now in this server because it is very difficult to manage a server and uh, it won't allow me to do a lot of things over here. So I'll just close this virtual machine and I'll open my own pre-configured virtual machine, which is a bit easier because I have configured it as I want. I'll just click on connect RDP. Download RDP file, save. I'll just go over here, click on it. Connect. The password is this. I hope my screen is visible. All right, so this is the virtual machine that we were talking about. This is not my virtual machine. I can, you know, I'll, I'll do this thing. So, you know, let's go to fast.com. This is something I boast a lot to my, to my, the, to the public wherever I present because I like boasting about this whole virtual machine thing. This is the internet speed that I am having right now. It is something very slow, although it is very fast. I have a 100 Mbps connection, but you know how BSNL is in India. So it, it might get slow. So this is the internet speed I am having right now. And I'll just head over to the virtual machine that I created. I'll go on fast.com and let's see the internet speed over here. Yeah, so you guys can see right how fast is a virtual machine and what kind of internet it is receiving so so you see it is it is having a really good internet. 300 mbps is a lot it's really fast you know i can download a movie if you take a reference of a movie a 600 mb movie you can download it in two seconds and you know sometimes this speed goes up to 1 gbps as well 1 gbps 2 gbps you know, so it varies what speed you get so a virtual machine is a very fast machine. So, you know, Microsoft won't call you up and tell you I am giving you one GBPS internet. So I will charge you more for that. No, that comes with a virtual machine that you are taking. So that is one of the benefit you have of a virtual machine that you have the resources as well as this whole. Uh, the network connectivity thing, security. There, there are a lot of factors in, in a virtual machine. There is SLAs, there are contracts, a lot of things that you can do. So this is the virtual machine that we are talking about. Now you might be thinking, why have I created this virtual? Why, why, in what way I can use this virtual machine? Let's try this command: dxdiag. Enter. Yes. So you see, this command gives an overview of your machine. So this is the Windows Server 2019 data center. It's a, it has an Intel Xeon processor CPU E5. This is a very costly processor which I cannot afford ever but it is a really good processor. But you see by Microsoft and this whole virtual machine thing, I can use this processor. Uh, the memory is 8 GB and uh, there are four CPUs in this. So you see, we have a lot of fa facilities over here. I'll explain it by this example. So once I was working on a program and it took nearly one hour to execute. It was a really huge program for a coding competition and it took one hour to execute. And the whole program, the whole thing I executed in this virtual machine and it hardly took five to 10 minutes. That's it. 
I know five to ten minutes is also a lot because the code was not optimized. This is one example. Another example I can give is, so I have a diploma in mechanical engineering. So I used to do a, a lot of mechanical engineering projects. So one of the projects is analysis. So, so what a mechanical engineers do is they take a part. Uh, let's say they take a cantilever beam and they do analysis on that cantilever beam. Uh, a cantilever beam is a very small example. We can take an example of a car, but let's not go there. So a cantilever beam, and you can do all type of analysis on it. And an analysis takes nearly, you know, half hour or one hour. If you do analysis of a whole car, it can take hours to 24 hours. It depends on the power of your machine. So when I was working on this uh, whole uh, 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 Mars rover thing, the analysis was taking a lot of time, 24 hours, 48 hours. of just a single joint itself so this was not efficient at all and recently i had joined the whole microsoft student partner thing and then where i learned you know you have all this compute power and this whole magic thing you have with you so what i did was i took the software ansys and i deployed it on a virtual machine a virtual machine that you see right now you know you can simply install any app you want over here so uh, if ajinkya is still there you know you can see this is the major difference between a virtual machine and a container so in a container you don't get this interface you cannot simply go on um, a uh, click on uh, firefox and download whatever software you want so you see container is a very specialized package that you use for your application whereas a virtual machine is something that you use as you want so i installed this ansys software on this virtual machine and then uh, i deployed my model Uh, the the model of the car that we were working on a uh, six wheeler a uh, six wheeler car so i deployed that six wheeler car on this virtual machine and the analysis hardly took 2 hours to complete so you see this is a huge difference between the uh, analysis that took part in my cpu my cpu had 64 gb ram okay this is just an 8 gb ram computer my cpu had 64 gb ram and still it was slower than this virtual machine it it is all because of the whole processing power that microsoft has with the cpu networking internet speed everything uh, in a package so you see how so in this way i i utilized virtual machines with my mechanical software and get my job got my job done in 2 hours that would usually take 14 hours 15 hours to complete so see this is a very fairly simple thing and you know i like to i like to conduct session on simpler thing because after learning simpler thing you will go ahead and do complex things i hope you enjoyed this and uh, let's have mustafa mustafa we have a, we have a question from atharva again uh, okay, he is yeah. asking if someone manages to get access to an ms server farm can i access my vm via wired connection okay see this is the thing uh, this is a very good question wired connection that means do you mean you have, you need to connect your your virtual machine from the data center up to your computer are you talking about that because there is a facility like that available as well so what are you exactly talking about do you want to put a wire from your home to microsoft server uh, atharva can you just uh, like ask uh, i mean yeah can i physically access my vm via wire if i go to server where my vm is deployed okay for first of all to use a wire from your computer to the microsoft server you need to be a very big company because for that microsoft is very uh, peculiar with security if you are putting up a wire then they put a secure line for you from the nearest data center to your uh, to your uh, office okay so otherwise they you know they they manage the whole thing if you want a wire they will get you a wire but for that you have to pay really huge you know when i say huge it means very great you know when you study about public cloud private cloud hybrid cloud and community cloud in more depth you will know why i am saying this because you will see how public cloud is cheaper than private cloud and what is a what is a hybrid cloud and you know when you do all this configuration microsoft has provided you a facility where you know microsoft comes to your server room i mean not actually but you know the whole process is something like this that they come to your server room they set up a server over there a microsoft server that microsoft server directly connects to the microsoft server in the data center and you see that local microsoft server gets connected to your local server so in a way yes that is a wired connection 
you but you cannot directly plug your your wire into a data center so i guess your i answered your question it is possible but you see it is a very complex procedure and you need a lot a lot of influence cash you need to be a big company and your application should be worth it otherwise you know that's great that's great cannot have that so the, another question is from harsh borwal he is asking how to use local resources of my hard disk in vm yeah this is a very good question so when you say local resources i will interpret it as a local operating system so what you can do is you can convert your operating system into an iso image and upload that iso image to the virtual machine and your whole computer itself will get you know like like a xerox copy it will get copied into the virtual machine another interpretation of your question can be that let's say let's say uh, you have an ssd and you are creating a virtual machine which ha- which has an hdd so no you cannot you know simply deploy your ssd into the virtual machine in your hdd the virtual machine thing will have its own resources if you want more resources a lot your resources in the virtual machine you cannot just add your local hard disk into the virtual machine there is a thing called hybrid cloud again but that is with respect to your applications when you read about hybrid cloud you will know that you let's say you keep the security part in your domain and you keep the configuration part in the cloud server type side virtual machine side but you cannot physically use your hardware to add it to the virtual machine hardware i hope i answered that if you if again you have question you can again ask it if you have any question just post it in the chat mustafa is still here with us he can answer all your questions uh i'll just you know demo how to clear a delete a virtual machine it's a very simple procedure so just click on the virtual machine click on delete and yes so that's it and the vm will get deleted but that is not it that is not the only thing you have to delete the resource group as well so you know you don't get charged for it so after you delete this virtual machine you will delete the resource group as well so let the whole process by the time it that's is great, getting that's great. you can ask a question yeah and talking about the session mustafa it was a really great session it was interactive it was informative it was a complete blend and people are actually loving it like we are getting comments from people like uh, anubhai is uh, saying amazing session aziz great session so my lazy deco she saying uh, awesome session from mustafa he has got me believing that i can become a vm expert and inspired thank you mustafa uh, so, yeah Yeah, yeah people are actually loving it and it was really a great session and we are happy to have you here that's great that's really great and you deserve to be a gold msp that's great thank you so much thank you so yeah see the vm is deleted and you can head to your home click on uh, so see the vm is deleted but the resource group might not be deleted so you have to go to the resource group and uh, search from the The, this these are all the resource group that i create this is all experimentation purpose only i do a lot of experiments so you see lg underscore rg we created right you know you can click this this resource group uh, i mean you can click on this three dots no no uh, this resource group yeah so you can click on the resource group and click on uh, delete resource group so for security purpose you have to type type this whole thing over here so i'll type it and only then this delete button will be enabled and i'll click on delete and all of these resources that you can see over here you, you see all of this all of this will be deleted and now the deletion process of the resource group has started so after you delete the resource group and the virtual machine you won't be charged for this okay still one minute is remaining so i'll just show you the you know the mustafa mustafa uh, we have a question from mark garcia he is asking yes. how can i get a file from vm to my pc my internet is very poor I've, I've answered okay. that in the chat. Um, and when you ask, you can just use Blob Storage uh, for your VM, and then access the Blob later from your own PC. Ah, uh, yeah. So oh. that is a yeah, that is a very good solution, Salman. But uh, you see, then they have to study about Blob Storage. <laughs> yeah, it? I I do not know. No. I think I think somehow um, some people may also be wondering how do I just simply copy. a file from my laptop to the vm and from the vm yes. to my laptop yes, yes. that one i think when you are connecting with your rdp um you have an option to just enable a property so that you can share between you know 
um, your operating system decks, like your actual machine, and then also the virtual machine. So you just drag and drop the files into your virtual machine, and then it will be copied. The reason why I would suggest using blob storage is because if you have a fault with your virtual machine, like then your files would also be at risk. But if you have blob storage, if your virtual machine goes down, your blob storage is still fine. So that's that's the way I would probably recommend going about it. Like learning. Yeah, I think I think it's an it's, would, I think it's, it's a great suggestion. On undoubtedly it's a great suggestion. But um um on the other hand, I'm just explaining if you need to copy just let's say a file from your your own machine to your virtual machine. It is as easy as, you know, you just copy and drag and drop it, and it's also possible. But like someone is saying, if it's for storage purpose, then it's great, you know, you have like a blob storage so that you can still access your files through that. So I think I agree with that as well. Yes, so I guess I can conclude my session. And uh, if you still have any questions, you can contact me on LinkedIn. Just simply search Mustafa Sefi. I'll just show you how I look on LinkedIn. So, you know, you'll identify that, yes, this is Mustafa. Yeah, but there might be a lot yeah. of Mustafa. Yeah. I'll link in the chat for your LinkedIn as well. So if you want to... Yeah, yeah. That. All our all our social profiles, all LinkedIn, Instagram, all our social profiles are in the description. So please check it out. And uh, if you have any questions, you can hit us up on LinkedIn. We are most active on LinkedIn. Also follow MSP Inspire. Also for, uh, like follow Salman, Dawood. Twitter account. So we like like to do such kind of events where we can educate people. We can like uh, like make an impact, learn something, make them learn something new. So we always come up with such sessions. So please subscribe to the MSP Inspire channel for uh, more such events. And uh, Mustafa, do, uh, in the conclusion, do you want to say something? Like everyone is thanking you. Everyone is like, uh, lo loving your session. So some words. You want to like, yes, express yes, to sure. the audience. All right. So yeah, I can tell. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes you know you when you watch all these sessions, you might feel that okay, fine. I don't know if this is helpful for me or not. I don't know if I can use this in my environment or not. There are questions like this. How will I use a virtual machine? I don't need a virtual machine. There are questions like this. And uh, so you know what I'll tell you is everything is useful, no matter what. No matter what you learn, no matter what session you attend, no matter no matter what coding language you learn, no matter what platform you learn, everything is useful. So you know, whenever you learn something, never think that you will never use it, right? So, so all the people who attended this session, thank you very much because you attended it even even knowing that you don't know about virtual machines, right? I mean, some might some of you might be knowing, but some of you might not be knowing, and still you have that spark in you to learn something new, right? That is a really great thing, you know. Great people do great things. Right. So, so just keep on doing these great things and, you know, become a great people and join. Mustafa, Mustafa we, we just completed 50 likes on the session and we have no dislikes. I repeat, no dislikes, just likes yes. and like so 50 plus likes. Like that's great. That's great. That's really great. Yeah. And can anyone Amazing. put, uh, can anyone put the form link, part two form link for the people to fill the form? Yeah, we will put it in the chat. I think we will put it in the chat and then we will disable it um, two hours after so that those who didn't attend the session would not get to, you know, fill it out just for certificates. So um, we won't put it on the website because it's publicly accessible. Um, so we'll just put it in the chat. Okay, yeah, Salman that's... dropped it in the chat already. Yeah, Salman did post also, it in the chat. Yeah, also, if you want to read more about how I personally use virtual machine, um, like Mustafa was saying, you'll be wondering, how do I use virtual machine? What is the use case for me, right? When my Surface Go um, space was actually getting red, I knew that I needed a second laptop, right? And by needing a second laptop would have cost me a huge amount of money to buy a new Surface Go or Surface Pro. So immediately, I started thinking about virtual machine, right? <laughs> so I created a virtual machine, and I do all my coding stuff there. And then I, you know, if I want to render some things, I do it in there, right? So I leave my, it's my very, surface book. It is a huge, I mean, that is the best example I've ever heard. You know, <laughs> another machine, you don't need to buy a laptop, just create a virtual machine. That is so awesome. Exactly, exactly. And, and the link is just on that. Machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mustafa, you said? Yeah, so you can, you know, bifurcate all your work, coding in one place and gaming on your PC. 
Yeah, you yeah and and you and you know this is less costly, right? Because yes, yes, with virtual machine, you just pay for when the time you know you are using it. If yes. you are not using it, you shut it down, and, and then, it's awesome. Yeah, they yes. call it operational yeah. expenditure as opposed to capital expenditure, which is really really nice because the with capital expenditure, the moment you buy something, the value starts to depreciate. Mm -hmm. But with operational, you know, exactly, you, just, you know, as you go, it scales horizontally exactly. and vertical. So just a, just a uh, just a quick update about tomorrow's session. So we have successfully completed three days, and tomorrow's session will be about uh, social entrepreneurship solutions to combat COVID-19. So it is about the present scenario, and it is going to be delivered by Anthony Diaz. So do check, do attend tomorrow as well at the same time, six to seven. So tomorrow's session is a bit non-technical, but still you'll get to learn something new out of it. So we expect like you join with us tomorrow as well. So we'll all see you tomorrow. Thanks yeah, and joining. I think Thanks those, for all those the who don't know about Anthony Diaz, um, Anthony Diaz is like, he's an entrepreneur, he's a good MSP, he's, he's done a lot. Um, he created a company when he was right from high school and the company is Skyrock and all this stuff. He wants to teach you how you can also establish your business, how you can, you know, um, do, do fun stuff, productive stuff whilst you're growing. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So here, here's uh, all, all of the upcoming events that we have. So we have the workshop, which is actually scheduled for today. By the way, by the way one, one thing, one thing that I said, the, the, the workshop videos and the dev 2 b videos that you see on this channel are rendered using a VM. Wow, that yeah. is great. That is a very good application. Cool. Yes. And sometimes these streams actually, might be run on a VM. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? You know what? Um, just a great call out over there. In two hours' time, we are going to be um, showing how to deploy, a, I mean, how to create Power App, how you can Power create app. a mobile app with zero knowledge, zero programming knowledge in two hours. So you just check up on the channel or check up in the link. The guys, uh, we are going to post uh, a link to that session over there. You learn for free, all right? This channel is all for you. It's all about empowering you. It's all about letting you know the, the, the cool stuff that you can do, even without knowledge, or the cool stuff that you can do with your existing knowledge. Uh, Mustafa is a great guy, 52 likes over, and people are really loving your session. Thank you so much for such a brilliant uh, thank presentation. You, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mustafa. That's great. So thank we'll all see you tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, and we'll all see you tomorrow. I would really like to yeah, thank Inkar to... and the team, because, you know, because I'll tell you guys, arranging an event you know uh, this the whole inspire team as well for salman and you know dauda and they are the you know pioneers of the inspire thing omkar and ajinkya for the the whole learn tech global thing it is a very difficult task to, you know it, it you know you you won't know until you do it right so you know it it takes a lot of effort to you know arrange it to create all the link it to the youtube uh, attend the chats and everything so you know i can understand how much hard you work for this so I would like to thank you for providing me this platform because I, 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 because of you guys I am speaking over here otherwise I won't be here right thank you so much Mustafa I really appreciate what you just said and uh, it's just like uh, what I want to say is uh, calling up speakers on this platform we, we get the motivation as well because we are doing something for the community so it is a pleasure for us as well and we are grateful to have you as our speaker in Lawn Tech Global so that's great. Like uh, having a speaker like you is indeed a pleasure for us, and uh, we like we want to thank you for actually accepting our invite and coming up here speaking on virtual machine. So that was a really, really like from my side, I really enjoyed the session. Uh, like even the audience, and we have a lot of positive comments as well. We have the likes over this session. So that was really great. It was overall a great session. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you want to check out our channels as well, so, feel conclude. free. Here's, here's my channel on uh, internship advice. If you want to know, I'm doing my internship at Microsoft, so I'm doing a series where I'm doing weekly videos, so do check these out. Uh, Dawood has some awesome videos on, you know, doing various amounts of things. He's into web dev 
Um, so yeah, do check out these videos of our own as well. They're featured on the whole MSP Inspire channel on the left. I can't go back for some reason on the right. So get, go check out these channels as well. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow and today later on where we have this Power Apps video. So yeah, don't forget to check these out. Why is it showing the wrong stuff? Okay, here you go. Check out this, set the reminder, hit the bell notification. Like and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you later. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. And do we have any final words from anyone else here today whilst I rendered the trailer? Join in like two hours again to see Power Apps. Yeah, yeah. you know what is really exciting about Power Apps is that you don't need to have, like there's no compile. There's, you know, it took me like two, one year or two years to be able to install um, <laughs> Android Studio, right? And what is nice about Power Apps is that you don't need to install any Android CD or whatever. You just go to make.powerapps.com and then you just, you know, you know, you have everything in the browser and just drag and drop and it is data driven. I mean, it's amazing. So Power Apps, you don't need any knowledge. And that is what I'm so excited about the session that is coming up in two hours. Those of you would have time. And Sunday does Power Apps mm -hmm. videos as well with custom Literally vision you and doing search. So check that. Yeah. I, I was just about to say that, like, like literally, you can create uh, a power app which could uh, do machine learning, which could do image classification in in under like fifteen or twenty minutes. Yep. Which yeah. is quite impossible if you want to do it, like you know, on your own. Um, I mean, I I and the Inspire team we took like uh, twenty four hours, Ooh. right? We created an amazing application with Power Apps, which as software developers, as software engineers it wouldn't have been possible for us to build it within that short amount of time. No way, right? So um, check it up, check it up. Just stay tuned and tune in to watch all Power Apps stuff. This channel has an amazing information, has amazing videos, has amazing sessions always. Click on the subscribe button. Keep hitting on the like button for Mustafa. Yeah, I did, I did actually want to, you know, show, um, you know, if you do want to check out some previous power apps made by student partners you can check our previous session which we did with donna and um that that was a really fun time um and yeah the power platform uh, i guess i could show you quickly here this is the one uh which we all worked on hopefully it plays the video uh play internet well wh how does this <laughs> not load <laughs> yeah there you go you can see this is uh, the app we did with uh, Power, Power, the Power Platform. We used the Power Virtual Agent, so we had a chatbot. We used Power Automate and we used Power Platform, uh, Power Apps itself. So yeah, the, learn how to create something cool like this later on today in about two hours. So hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. And the trailer's done, so let's watch that. Bye, everyone.